Airports can be stressful places, with the crowd, the noise, and the hard to find comfy seats. That's where airport lounges come into play, not only giving you a more peaceful environment, but great food, great drinks, and sometimes even a shower. You might think you need expensive business or first class tickets for access, but by holding the right credit cards, you'll get access for free even when you're flying basic economy. Card number one, and this is actually free, and that's with the US Bank Altitude Connect card. Having gone through some recent changes, this card is turning into a no annual fee card. No more $95 after the first year, you get all of the benefits with none of the cost. Benefits like the 50,000 points after spending just $2,000 over the first 120 days, a straight up $500 of value through their travel portal, or $400 for a straight cash. Cashback. Either way, still a massive net positive. You'll also have some great multipliers like earning five times on prepaid hotels and car rentals through the portal, four times on gas and EV up to 1K a quarter, and two times on dining, streaming, and grocery stores. The card itself is a pretty nice all-rounder with a big injection of value from the welcome bonus. But we're talking lounges here, so what does this card get you? Well, despite the update, you'll still get the complimentary priority pass access with up to four free visits across their 1,500 lounges around the world. And so this is an amazing way to literally get free lounge access on a no annual fee card and pocket a few hundred dollars of value. If you want even more visits, then consider the US Bank Altitude Reserve card. Coming in at a whopping $400 in annual fees, it might be scary at first, but there's a catch. You get an annual $325 in credit towards eligible travel and dining, with no restrictions on specific places. And so if you travel or dine out even a little bit every year, you can consider this like cash and reduce the annual fee to just an effective $75. But even for that amount, you get quite a lot like a welcome bonus of 50,000 points after 4.5k of spend in 90 days, worth 750 when redeemed for travel. You'll also earn an elevated 3 times points for travel purchases as well as mobile wallet, and with everywhere taking tap nowadays, that's like getting 3 times points on all purchases, where redeemed for travel, that's like getting 4.5% back in value for all of those purchases. Now this card has a ton of other amazing features, but regarding lounge access, this is a an upgrade to the Connect card, where here you're getting 8 free visits, whether it's yourself, your guests, either way it works. Alright, so that's US Bank, but what if you're a person who really wants to maximize the value they get from their spend, while also getting lounge access? Well, for card number 3, consider the American Express Green Card. This is a card that's not that popular, especially coming in at $150 in annual fees, but it does have its own use cases. First, the 40,000 point welcome bonus is after 3k of spend across a longer 6 month period. And compared to US bank points which are more static in value, Amex points are a bit more flexible allowing you to get even more value from each point. Check out this video for some awesome redemption methods, but essentially you could earn upwards of 2 cents per point in value if you put in the work redeeming for flights and hotels. Take my recent redemption, flying from Vancouver over to Osaka for just 55,000 Aeroplan points, which can be transferred over from American Express. This flight had a cash value of $2,461, minus the fees that results in a value of 3.3 cents per point. And that was with 8 seats available, so not a rare find. And so if you do put in the hard work, you can find these amazing redemptions bumping up the values to 3 to 5 cents per point. But even at an average of 2 cents per point, that 40,000 points bonus could easily be worth upwards of $800. When it comes to spending, it's an alright card giving you 3 times on travel, dining, and transit, but it's the two related travel benefits that make this card interesting. First, you get the $189 Clear credit, giving you expedited access through the lines. And in case you're wondering, Clear helps you skip the first line getting to the security to check your IDs. And then TSA PreCheck comes into play, putting you into the line where you don't need to take off your shoes, belts, and things from your bag. And then for the lounge benefit, getting a $100 Lounge Buddy credit. Having been a acquired by Amex, this is a directory for all the lounges at airports around the world. Some of them letting you book directly, like this Blossom Lounge in Singapore, which has a pretty good noodle bar serving classics like laksa. 
At these prices, it'll only give you two to three visits, but again, the Amex green card fits a more unique use case, where if the other parts of this card work for you already, then the lounge benefit is just extra. Now, before we get to my top three, with all of these different lounges, how do they differ? Well, they all boil down to three main buckets. Bucket number one are the big lounge networks. These are the types of lounges that exist at most of the airports you visit. And there are two giants in this space. First, you have the widest network of lounges spanning over 1,500 locations. And that's Priority Pass, with about 10% of those being in North America. I'm not sure why they separate out Canada there, but hey. And from being to quite a few of these over the years, both domestically and internationally, they do get the job done with some nice spaces, but sometimes the food could be subpar. That said, with such a wide network, it at least gives you that separation from the main airport areas, especially for a place to work or having some drinks and snacks. Because we all know airport food is really expensive. Cost-wise, membership to this lounge network could cost you between three to $500 a year. But fortunately, a lot of the cards we talk about today will give you some form of free access. Honestly, I don't know who actually pays for this upfront. And then lounge network Network 2 is a smaller network consisting of about 250 different lounges, and that's with Plaza Premium. With the 10 visit pass costing upwards of $300, it's kind of on par with the priority pass, but again could be free with some of the cards today. From my experience, I quite like these Plaza Premium lounges, maybe because most of the places I've been traveling to are in Asia, and lounges there are just on another level, or because I've been flying domestically through Vancouver and Seattle a lot, where Vancouver just had a renovated Plaza Premium Lounge for even domestic flights, which is kind of nice. And then for Seattle, I've either been to those mediocre Priority Pass lounges or the new Centurion lounges, which brings me to bucket number two, which are these credit card network of lounges. These are lounges I would say are one step above those big lounge networks in that they offer a nicer space, better foods, or nicer amenities. And this whole space has been paved by American Express and their Centurion network of lounges spanning over 40 locations worldwide. I've been to three of these, LA, Las Vegas, and Seattle, and they're all pretty great. Their customer service is top-notch as you would expect from American Express, and some locations even have booths you can take calls and meetings from, or a coffee and smoothie bar like here in SeaTac. Next and following in their footsteps is Chase with their Chase Sapphire network of lounges. Partnered with The Club, as of the time of this filming, there are currently four open lounges around the world with Boston, Hong Kong, and two in New York. I haven't had the chance to visit any of these yet, but from the pictures and reviews I've been watching online, they look really nice. Some locations even have a complimentary 30-minute facial too. I do have an upcoming New York trip, so maybe I'll route through one of these airports just so I can visit one of them, especially when Priority Pass members have one visit every year, and I have two Priority Passes. And then third, we have Capital One joining the race, starting with their network of lounges in Dallas, Denver, and Washington. Again, the design looks really calm and modern, and I definitely want to check these out whenever I get a chance to visit these cities. And then the third bucket of these lounges are the more airline-specific ones. Some of these you can get with very specific credit cards that these airlines have, or you actually have to fly first or business class with these airlines or their partners. For example, having the City American Airlines Executive Card will get you complimentary access to their Admiralty Club, but is a card that costs $595 a year with barely a credit to help offset that cost. On the United side, you have the United Infinite card giving you access to the United Clubs, coming in at $525 in annual fees, also without that many credits to help offset. You could go with the United Explorer card with a $0 intro annual fee and does come with two passes to the United Club if you want to test the waters. Or on Delta, the $650 Delta Reserve card giving you complimentary access to Delta Sky Clubs. But with any of these airline cards, it's usually only worth it when you're already flying a lot with these airlines because you can benefit from things like a head start for status, free check bags or other perks for these specific airlines. But if you do get a chance to visit some of these lounges, wow can they be amazing. Some of the best lounges I visited last year include the United Polaris Lounge having a la carte dining and nap rooms, 
or this Singapore Airlines Chris Flyer Lounge having two massive buffet areas. These are lounges that range from the mid-tier to some of the best lounges out there. But because these airline lounges are more unique in how you can gain access, I think the sweet spot and most accessible for normal people are those middle ground credit card lounges. On their bright side, usually cards that offer those perks also include access to those larger lounge networks, which is true for cards like the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Similar to the US Bank Altitude Reserve card, this card has a shockingly high $550 in annual fees, but it also has a credit to help offset that with $300 towards any travel purchases, one of the most flexible credits out there. And because of that, I consider the annual fee to just be an effective $250. But what do you get from that? First, a respectable 60,000 points after just 4,000 of spend in the first three months. Given Chase points are one of the most flexible out there, this could be worth $600 for a cashback, $900 through their travel portal, or upwards of $1,200 when using travel partners. Again, valuing upwards of two cents per point. For a complete walkthrough, check out the video up here. It also comes with some solid points earnings through categories like travel and dining, as well as some perks across Lyft, DoorDash, Peloton, and Instacart. But of course, what's special here is the lounge access, giving you access to both the Priority Pass network of lounges as well as their own Chase Sapphire lounges. What I don't fully get is why the Sapphire card itself is not enough. You need to pair it with the enrollment in your Priority Pass. I wonder is it because they're just starting out, so they want another company like Priority Pass to pay for some of the access until they get to a certain volume and then kick them out but who knows. That said, I have to imagine that people are going to be really disappointed at the recent changes. Because right now, the Sapphire Reserve's Priority Pass actually includes non-lounge benefits like restaurants. However, starting July 1st of 2024, the restaurant and other non-lounge experiences will no longer be available, putting this in line with the other Priority Pass benefits on some other cards. A major downgrade here. Now the next card is what I think is the best premium travel card for most people, given the low effective annual fee, access to their growing network of lounges, as well as both Plaza Premium and Priority Pass, with a twist. And that's with the Capital One Venture X card. Not only does it have a relatively low $3.95 in annual fees, it has two easy to use credits to offset that. First, with a $300 annual travel credit for use in their portal, and the $100 worth of miles you get every anniversary year. Using both of these credits to the fullest will bring the effective annual fee to minus $5. And that's on top of the 75,000 miles bonus after 4k of spend in 3 months. Not only is this a great catch-all card, which has been my primary use case, it also gets you the top tier Hertz President Circle status and free additional card holders, which might be better than you think. You see, this card gets you access for yourself and two guests to the Capital One lounges and Plaza Premium lounges. But for Priority Pass lounges, you actually get unlimited guests. That's different than other cards we've talked about like the Sapphire Reserve with its two guest limit. But with the free additional card holders, each of those card holders will get their own version of these lounge benefits, which means they can bring their own guests as well. Unfortunately, this card's Priority Pass does not include restaurants, but the business version of this card still does for now. And then finally, the card that gives you the widest variety of lounges, and that's with the American Express Platinum card. Dubbed the coupon book of the credit card world, it has a ton and ton of credits to try and offset that massive $6.95 in annual fees. And to be honest, although the target audience for this card is less than the Venture X and the Sapphire Reserve in my opinion, a lot of people still find value in it, including me. Because in my use case, between the two $200 hotel credit, the $200 airline fee credit, the Uber Cash, the $189 in Clear credit, and the $100 of Saks Fifth Avenue, that's more than enough to cover the yearly costs. And that's not including the $240 in digital entertainment credit, which I would imagine a lot of people do use, or mentioning the Hilton and Marriott Gold statuses, giving you upgrades for some of your stays. It also comes with a great baseline of 80,000 points after 8,000 of spend in the first six months, going as high as 150,000 points if you're targeted. Putting this card 
start at or near the top of the list for welcome bonus value. As we said earlier, the points here could be worth upwards of two cents per point, pinning that welcome bonus upwards of $3,000 of value. For a full breakdown of my five years with a card, check out the video over here. But when it comes to lounge benefits, this card has it all. With Priority Pass and Plaza Premium, as well as their own Centurion network of lounges, including Escape Lounges, Lufanza when flying with them, and 10 visits to the Delta Sky Club also when you're flying with Delta. Personally, I've only visited the Plaza Premium, the Priority Pass, and the Centurion network of lounges, but I do want to find time to visit the Delta Sky Club here in SeaTac when I can find a reason to fly Delta instead of Alaska for wherever I'm going. So with all of that said, is lounge access worth it? In my opinion, it's a resounding yes, as long as you're not buying those passes directly. If you need it, lounges provide a great way for you to work or take calls. If you're a casual traveler, you could easily save $20 to $30 per person per visit for the food and drinks. And if you have multiple cards with lounge access, you can stack them to bring in an even bigger group. What I recommend is to first see how often you travel, because if you don't, then why are you even still watching? If you do, how often? Do you need those very expensive cards, or can you go with the low cost options giving you a couple visits? Which airports do you pass by often? and what lounges exist there. For example, I probably wouldn't get the Sapphire Reserve given there's no Sapphire Lounge in SeaTac, but there is the new Centurion Lounge, which really swings my decision. Or maybe you already have some of these cards and the lounge benefits are just a cherry on top. If you don't, then go on and check out this video for why you may be missing out not having these premium travel cards. See you over there.